There was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was seven thousand sheep, three thousand camels, five hundred oxen, five hundred asses, and a great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. And his sons went and feasted in their house every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For God said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence thou comest, or whence comest thou? Then Satan answered and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that fears God and eschews evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for naught? Has not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he has, and he will curse thee to thy face. Hmm. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he has is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yeah, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Alright, so consider this. When did this take place? Well, first of all, I think it's pretty obvious it took place after the flood. I don't know how you could dispute that. I honestly don't. And I think one key word here that, I mean, aside from the fact, I mean, there's so much here. Let's just establish something here. Now, I want to hear somebody argue that this is not the same Job, Genesis 46. I want to hear that argument. Um, and then, of course, if you're going to make that argument, then let's make this argument as well. The Sabians. All right, let's do this. The Sabians. The Sabians right here in Isaiah 45, Ezekiel 23, Joel 3. All right. This is clearly after the flood. Clearly. No doubt about it. I think there might have been one more thing that I was going to point out. But um, the Chaldeans. All right. Was that. What would that say right there? A member of an ancient people who lived in Chaldea, 800 BC, well after the flood. Now that's important to establish that. Okay, here in Job 1. Let's just take Job 1. Let's not put too much on the table. Let's establish right here in Job 1 the Chaldeans, the Sabians, after the flood. No question about it. No. <laughs> I mean, it's it's almost ridiculous to even uh, point that out, but it's important. It is. It's important because 
there should be absolutely no doubt this is well after the flood. Now, consider this. They came to present themselves before the Lord. This is in regards to burnt offerings. All right, now, it's also important, uh, if this seems so obvious, uh, bear with me, okay? It, it should be obvi obvious. should be very obvious. Consider this. That Cain brought Let's see, that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. So who is Cain? Well, Cain and Abel are the first. Let's, let me say it this way. Cain is the first. Here, let's do it this way. Cain is the firstborn of Adam and Eve. All right. And then, of course, Abel being his brother. And they, this is well before the flood, right? And she buried again his brother Abel. All right, so there's Cain and Abel well before the flood, and they were making offerings to God. Now, <laughs> so this is not a new thing that we're reading about in the book of Job. In, in my mind, this is important. It's, it's obvious, but it's important. You see that Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. Noah. Now, this is well before the burnt offerings of uh, Exodus, right? And of course, this goes into uh, uh, you know greater detail on exactly how this uh, should be done by the people of God, and so on. But th I just want to establish the fact that this is not a new thing, and it's no in no way should this be uh, argued <laughs> that this happened before. the earth was made and there's no reason at all to argue that this was happening in heaven all right when you start at the very first verse there was a man in the land of ooze where is this at in heaven I mean you're trying too hard if you're gonna argue that this is in heaven way too hard all right, I say all this to establish the fact that these guys were making offerings to God. This is not a new thing. This is just uh, uh, it was just a, a tradition that that's been going on for since the beginning. All right, and so now there was a day when this is all established exactly where this is uh, happening and who's involved. Then we read, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. This is when they are making offerings to God. Just like they'd always done. And this is getting uh, down to a, a particular day. It's not the first day. It's not before they started doing it. I mean, you're going way beyond the simple. When you try to make this argument that this was happening in heaven, it wasn't. It's clearly happening on earth. I mean, I wonder if some people even read the first five verses when they make the argument that this is happening in heaven. It's not. you got to be deliberately ignorant to make that argument, okay? And if you don't know, if you haven't read the book of Job at least a couple of times, I mean, come on, man. Why are you pretending to be a teacher and an expert on the book of Job when you haven't even read the book? Did you even read the first verse is what my question might be. Really. 
And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? The Satan answered him, From going to and fro in the earth, from walking up and down on it. There's no reason at all to all of a sudden think that this is all happening in heaven and that the sons of God are fallen angels, not just angels, the fallen angels. So fallen angels are presenting themselves before the Lord. No, that's not what this is saying at all. Now, it's very clear, Job is a son of God. His sons are and daughters are sons of God. And it should be very obvious when we read in Luke uh, chapter 3, I think it is. I don't know. Yeah, right here. The, the genealogy of Luke chapter 3. We read that, you go through the list of all these people, and at the very end, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. Adam was the son of God. Adam being the son of God, Seth being the son of God, Enos being the son of God, Canaan, Jared, Methuselah, and so, you know, so on and so forth. Sons of God. And there came a day when the sons of God, right? If Adam is a son of God, then his sons are sons of God. That's what they are, sons of God. That's what they're called. That's what they were. And uh, I don't know what's so hard to understand. There's no reason at all to believe that Adam was a fallen angel. Is that what this is saying? What in the world gives you that impression? Nothing. It's completely imaginary. And you're trying to fit some sort of weirdo UFO doctrine into the scripture that just don't square up. Uh, it should be obvious. Okay, now you got to establish this fact that in Job 1, the sons of God were not at all angels, fallen angels, none of that. All right, once you're honest with yourself, then you can start to see, hopefully, that every single mention of the sons of God all throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Oops. Yikes. It. Every single mention is talking about men. Sons, the word son should be a clue, right? The word son should automatically tell you that it's not an angel. That should be by default. If you see the word son, it cannot be talking about an angel. Impossible. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son? None. Not a single angel is considered a son of God. Not a single time. So in Genesis 6, I mean, it should be pretty obvious. Because verse 1 defines verse 2. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them. So are we talking about angels? No. <laughs> I mean, you got to be just deliberately lying to yourself. When you read this and, oh, that's talking about angels. What in the world gave you that impression? Did, have you not read this? Did, did you notice, hey, they've got men, we've got daughters, we got them, we got sons of God, daughters of men, wise, man, flesh, giants, Sons of God, daughters of men, children, mighty men, men of renown, men, wickedness of man, and his heart, and man, 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 and every, it's humble, and not one single mention of angels, not one, see, not even a hint, a suggestion, not no implications at all. 
you're just screwing with the doctrine. You're just screwing with the scripture. That's it. You're just lying to yourself. All right, now let's read a comment here from W. Tom 04. He says, J. Heading Cologia, the expression sons of God is referring to fallen angels. Job 1, verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God, the fallen angels. Now keep that in mind. He's not saying that they're angels. He's going one step further in calling them fallen angels. Then he says it only makes logical sense for fallen angels along with their leader, Satan. There's another thing that's not supported by scripture anywhere at all to come presenting themselves before God as they are accountable to God where God has ultimate authority over them. So, I mean, <laughs> you're saying that fallen angels are making burnt offerings to God. Um, that's, it's just utterly, utterly ridiculous. But these are, there's a lot of people like this that that believe this and they teach this and they just say to hell with what the Bible says this is what I believe and I'm trying to I'm gonna use the Bible to try to fit this bizarro Hollywood UFO doctrine now if you don't care about the truth that's on you I'll show you the truth very simply alright so let's go to where are we at here Let's go to 1 John chapter 3. Now let's let's follow this. Let's let's play along, okay? Let's play along with the expression sons of God is referring to fallen angels. Beloved, now are we the fallen angels? Is this not an attack on the people of God? This doctrine is extreme hatred for God and his people. And don't you buy into it. 